Hey guys, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be discussing ECMP or Equal Cost Multipath Routing on Router OS. Now, it's a fun and interesting load balancing mechanism that we can use in our routing. And it's really straightforward to understand and set up, but there is some quirks that you need to be aware of when it comes to ECMP. Anyways, let's dive into the video and enjoy. Alrighty, so let's get into a little bit of ECMP theory, what it's about and what we aim to actually make happen with it. And I've got a diagram here that you might have seen in a few of the videos. I've kind of explained static routing and using a default gateway or failover with it. But with ECMP, um, in essence, our goal is if we have multiple links that our router can choose to get to a destination, then we can tell the router, hey, you can use multiple paths for that destination. So it can be a specific destination or it can be your default route out, but you can tell the router, hey, I've got multiple gateways. They're going to have the exact same cost and you can use either of these gateways to form a connection. Now ECMP is per connection and it is a form of load balancing. So in essence, what it will do for us, it will allow our router to send and then receive packets back um, over multiple different links. So this is very useful for load balancing, even though it's not the only use case for it, but it is a way that we can just more effectively use our network if we have multiple links. Now, ECMP has some issues when it comes to some dynamic connections. Even though the ECMP works fine, I've actually seen a few people complain about stuff like if you have like two triple PoE connections and you connect to, let's say, a banking website and then your connection comes from the one public IP. But when you click on the login to the banking page and it redirects you somewhere else, that login is now going over the, uh, the other connection and then banking sites sort of freak out when that happens so maybe when it comes to certain banking type of traffic or places that expect a single connection from a specific ip when you form the first connection disable ecmp for those type of things set up static routes um, just for those destinations but other than that ecmp is pretty pretty rock solid all right Alrighty, so I'm in my EVE topology and we're going to work on router 6 because this is a device that currently does have multiple WAN connections and it'll be relatively straightforward and easy to set up ECMP on it. Now I've got Winbox open here, so I'm just going to bring this up, maximize it, and let's just have a look at the routing table quickly. So I'll go into my IP routes and I can see I've got two static routes out to the internet for both of my WAN connections. And it's basically like a basic failover if the one link actually goes down and will fail over. But let's say we want to use both links simultaneously using ECMP. So all I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to, you don't need to remove the second route, but I'm just going to do this because it will make a lot of sense uh, to see it this way. So now we've got a single route out to 0000 slash 0. Uh, with the gateway 10.0.0.9. So if I double click on this route to bring up its properties, we can actually see here is the gateway and that it is reachable. Now, if we want to enable ECMP for a static based route, it's as simple as clicking on the down arrow and specifying your new gateway. So my next gateway will be 10.1.0.13, which is, if I look at my EVE topology, that is the IP between router six and three and i just hit apply and then technically this will enable the ecmp so now ecmp is effectively running it will start routing packets over each connection uh, but before we start doing that there is one more let's say almost a hint or an extra that i, I want to lay off here and that is the check gateway option. You've seen us use the check gateway in the previous videos. It's very useful with ECMP because with ECMP, it may still try and send a packet across to a gateway, which is effectively down. So make sure that you also just use the check gateway so that it can test to see if a gateway is up or not. And if the gateway is down, then it can effectively not try and send the packet over a dead link. So I'm going to just apply this. So now we've got one route, but it's going to route over two different WAN paths. Just a quick edit or something that I forgot to mention is 
um, that ECMP is also able to work on various different routing tables. So if you look at your IP routes and you click on this box here, if you have either policy-based routing or different VRFs, you can go into those VRFs or policy-based routes and set up ECMP on them as well. So it can happen per VRF or main routing table or per policy-based routing. Anyways, that, that's all I wanted to say. Let's continue with the video. Now to test this, I can actually log onto that Docker machine and I might open up a few different sessions. So what I'm going to do is, let's use some Firefox and I might go to YouTube. Let's go to Facebook. Let's go to um, even just Google. Let me see, there's Reddit. Let's open up Twitter. So all these different sites I'm opening up, it's effectively going to be pushing traffic over our links. And I can quickly verify what is happening if I just go into my interfaces, we can actually see that both WAN connections are currently sending and receiving traffic. They're both working. They're doing their job. I can torch the interfaces just to verify what traffic is actually uh, coming in over it. And I could even have a look at my IP firewall connections. And then from here, I'd also be able to see exactly um, what is connecting where and kind of which WAN entries are being used. But effectively now, <laughs> this is actually pretty cool to me, is that both of the WAN links are being used at the same time. So we are load balancing, even though it's super slow because I'm, I'm limited to one meg per interface on these CHRs because it's a trial license. Um, but let's maybe see if we could do a cool test, like just run a trace route from uh, this machine. Trace route 8888. And let's also try and do a trace on Winbox itself. Trace or tool trace route 8888. And if I look at my trace route on the first window, I can see it left over 10.009. Let's just try and do another trace route. Okay, so the trace route it appears it's just going to keep this way, but uh, it's kind of half expected. That's why I wanted to do it over a different host. Uh, let's see if I can trace route to 1111. So apparently I'm having some issues just trace routing from this uh, Docker machine, but it's not an issue. Let me just try and ping 1111. And then I'd like to see if that traffic might actually leave over the second connection. I'm kind of hoping it does. So it is, it is actually leaving over the second WAN which is awesome. So traffic is now effectively being load balanced. So each connection can now take a separate path because they're both equal in cost. And it just frees up some more bandwidth for us and lets us do a lot more cool things with the network. So this will wrap up the ECMP video. I hope it's been informative. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can answer any of them. Um, I'd like to thank all of the guys that have been signing up as Patreons and YouTube members. There has been a few of you that joined, which I really appreciate a lot. Even the old people that's been sticking around. Guys, thank you so much. You are making the channel worthwhile to keep creating this type of content. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll possibly first be discussing VRFs and then we'll jump into um, our lost or not lost stuff, but we'll, we'll get into the OSPF stuff then. So thank you again and see you in the next video. Bye.